Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 17 online connected franchise mode game. It is week four of the primetime football league. It is also Thursday night football against the San Francisco 49ers. I know we just played the Niners a couple weeks ago, but the way the schedule is aligned, we played them again in week four as we tackled a rookie running back, Nico Wayne. Last time we played against the 49ers, rookie running back Pearson Bronson in his NFL debut ran for nearly 275 yards and five touchdowns. So we'll see if we can replicate that, but it is some pretty ugly conditions out here today. Now, what I do want to talk about during this uh, video for the majority of the game is uh, do a season preview for the Seattle Seahawks for the upcoming NFL season, real life season, not a CFM season. So I apologize to the diehard CFM fans that might not want to hear this, but I mean, I'll be posting every single game from the season. It's just one game we're going to sacrifice kind of to do this series. But look at this play. Third down and 14, Tyler Lockett gets the catch. Or so you may think. They don't even give him a catch. Forget the fact that, you know, it might have been close to a first down. They didn't even give him a catch. I don't think he got two feet in and all that. But uh, the count is incomplete for some reason. And we end up kicking a field goal up and go with Houchko, which is good because of the inclement weather conditions. But yeah, you know, I'll be doing that the rest of the season. So we're just going to do this one video for the most part. Spoiler alert, this wasn't really the craziest game of all. I didn't sacrifice the game of the year to do this video on, all right? We'll just put it that way. You guys can watch and see what happens. So now... Let's transition to the CLC. Oh, yeah. One more thing before I get into that. Um, we have a 3-0 record entering this game because we got a sim win against the Bengals because literally the Bengals owner was in Disney World. So we didn't get the play as Sherman catches it, but it's out of bounds. So it's incomplete. So now we go into the Seahawks preview. Part of the reason why we do good with the Seahawks team every single year in the CFM is because... They're good in real life, and that's the way they're built, to be really good for a long time. When the Seahawks won the Super Bowl against the Denver Broncos, they truly looked like the next potential dynasty of the NFL, the way the Patriots are. And you're not even just the Patriots, but like the Steelers or something like that. Or, you know, just making it to multiple Super Bowls. And they did make it to the Super Bowl the very next year against the New England Patriots, and it looked like they were on their way to a victory, but... Not as spectacularly as the Atlanta Falcons. They blew a four-quarter lead. Tom Brady being Tom Brady made the comeback. They got the win. And, of course, the interception at the goal line when they could have ran the ball. Marshawn Lynch. But, you know, ever since then, Seattle hasn't really too, come too close to getting back to the Super Bowl. I mean, they made it to the playoffs every single year, which is a great feat. Nothing to, you know, understate. But once they made it to the playoffs... They've kind of bowed out in unspectacular fashion. You remember the Carolina game? First of all, before the Carolina game, the Vikings game from the 2015 playoffs. Or uh, 2016, I think it was. But, um, yeah, they probably should have lost that game considering Blair Walsh had an easy field goal, missed that. Then the Carolina game... You know, they got to a horrendous first quarter start. Keekly had the pick six. Russell Wilson was under duress. And they put themselves in such a huge hole. And they were making a furious comeback late. And it looked like on a different day, that Seahawks team might have been able to beat the Panthers. But just on that given day, the way that game played out, they lost. So they kind of blew that opportunity. And then last season, they, you know, they lost Earl Thomas. And they really weren't able to overcome that in the playoffs. Going against an elite quarterback, and elite offense like Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. They ended up taking the L. So now that leads us to what they're going to do this season. How are they going to rebound? Can the Seahawks continued this run of excellence that they've been on? It is really hard to, you know, do what the Seahawks have done and make the playoffs the amount of times that they have made the playoffs and, you know, dominating the NFC West Conference besides little runs from the Arizona Cardinals. Besides that, the Seahawks are the one constant to that our division, I should say. And it looks like they're on pace to do it once again. And it won't be because of that offensive line, all right? Offensive line is still not a good unit for the Seattle Seahawks. It's still nothing worth writing home about. They added Luke Joko in the offseason, which, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. But because of that offensive line, that, that won't let them run the ball as much as they'd like to run the ball. And the Seattle Seahawks, as you guys know, they built their identity on defense and smash mouth football with Marshawn Lynch. But Marshawn's not here anymore. They have a good collection of running backs. That won't be why they're not able to run the football. I don't like Thomas Rawls personally. He got injured and, you know, he's had a little bit of an injury history. So we have to see if Rawls stays healthy. But when Rawls is healthy, I like the way he runs, man. He's a quick guy, but he also runs with a lot of power. So... It's a good combination. They got Eddie Lacy in the offseason. If Eddie Lacy can keep his weight in check, he's not a bad running back. I mean, I, I might have too much faith in Eddie Lacy. I always draft him in fantasy football and get screwed over. I am not doing that this year. But they got Eddie Lacy. And then if CJ Procise comes back healthy, that's a big plus as well. Speaking of coming back healthy, if Tyler Lockett comes back healthy, that would be a great addition. 
But even a Tyler Lockett doesn't come back healthy. They have a pretty decent core of receivers on this team. And the Seahawks, you know, are slowly transitioning into more of a passing offense. They're, like, evolving in a way. Before, Russell Wilson was a game manager. Now, Russell Wilson's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Not only can he, you know, shake the pressure and all that, which helps with the bad offense line, making those Houdini-like plays. Now, he's just making throws downfield. Now, he's making reads downfield. Doug Baldwin's... Evolved into one of the best receivers during this stretch. You know, you put Doug Baldwin in the slot and he's very hard to cover. You got to get some extra linebacker help in the middle or something like that. And then, you know, you give some receivers on the outside. Jimmy Graham in the middle. I, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of the Unger and Jimmy Graham trade that they did a couple years ago. But it's not like Jimmy Graham's a slouch. He's still one of the best tight ends in the NFL when he's healthy. So, you know, it's still, it's a, it's a trade-off. He definitely gets screwed over on the offensive line by losing Max Unger. But Jimmy Graham's still there, and Graham was pretty good last year. Jermaine Curse, he's been a consistent, okay guy for the Seahawks. Not that great, but he'll get the job done. And then Paul Richardson. Paul Richardson broke out of nowhere in the playoffs last year, making all these spectacular catches. Like the one against the um, Panthers at the goal line. It was like fourth down, and, or not the Panthers, the Lions. They made that spectacular catch. So Paul Richardson, if he could continue... On that trend, then that's a big plus for that offense. Like I said, Russell Wilson, I believe, is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. He's not, like, the best or anything like that. He's not on the Brady level, the Matt Ryan or the Drew Brees level or anything like that. But, I mean, Russell's near there. He's definitely near there. He's definitely, especially with the way he can move around, his mobility definitely helps him out. And, you know, on top of that, Russell Wilson's always been a good leader for this team. Now, the defense side of the football, uh, I, I don't think I got to tell you guys the Seattle Seahawks defense is really good. You guys see it in the CFM. You guys know in real life for the amount of years. And the amazing thing about this defense and the team in general is they've kept these core guys around for the most part. Most of them, you know, they've been here since the Super Bowl run. A lot of times, you know, these teams... After they make a big time run the playoffs, you look at them five years later and they might have two guys on their team that exist from that run a couple years ago. This Seahawks team has a lot of guys. They still have Bobby Wagner. He's playing his best football at this point. Cam Chancellor is playing some of his best football at some point. Richard Sherman is not playing his best football, but he's still a top 10 corner in the NFL. Michael Bennett and Cliff Averill, that's still a good pass rush. Uh, Earl Thomas, I mentioned before, Earl Thomas got hurt. You definitely need Earl Thomas to stay healthy, but he's still around as well. It's, you know, they got a lot of continuity on this team. That's why the Seahawks have been so good for so long and why they're going to be a good football team again. And then they got young guys developing as well. You know, you got Frank Clark in the pass rush. You got, oh yeah, KJ Wright, by the way. He's another one of those guys that has been around for a while. They drafted Jaron Reed in the draft last year. In the, um, what was it? The, not, not last year. It was... Was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. My bad. I'm looking at, like, all these draft things. It was last year. They drafted uh, Ifaldi first round, Jaron Reed second round. Jaron Reed, he could potentially develop in a decent player. But even without Jaron Reed, they had the best run defense last year pretty much on paper. And they had a really good pass defense. So the one thing that you got to look at is Seahawks. You know, a lot of times when teams don't have a good team on paper, I try to look for the positives. And sometimes when a team has a really point blank obvious really good roster sometimes you got to look for what could potentially go wrong because it most likely is going to go right you just got to play devil's advocate sometimes in these things and just see what could go wrong for them and the one thing about the seahawks is that you know they've had this team for so long they could be aging a little bit might not happen this year but when you look at their draft classes they haven't exactly hit in the draft like they did before but with the seahawks sometimes it takes a couple of years for their guys to really develop and really showcase their stuff like paul richardson for example he was drafted in 2014 he only showed up in the playoffs so when you look back at last year's draft, hopefully a, a Fetty, a Faldi, I don't know what the hell I call him. But whatever he is, he looked like an absolute bust last year. When you watch the Seahawks games, that dude was getting torched. And it wasn't a good situation from Texas A&M. My dude, Jermaine, a Fetty, I think his name is. I probably still am saying his name wrong. Otherwise, though, Jaron Reed, he could be okay. CJ Process was really good. Hopefully, he comes back healthy. And then... um. A couple years ago, Frank Clark, he's starting to show up now. Tower and Lockett obviously made a Pro Bowl with his returns and all that. And then this year's draft, they're building on that defensive line in case Jaron Reed isn't good. They got Malik McDowell, and hopefully he's pretty good. One of the concerns about the Seattle Seahawks defense for a while now is going to be a concern again, especially since Deshaun Shedd's towards ACL, is the second cornerback spot. Who's playing besides Richard Sherman? We talked about it a little bit with the Cardinals. Who's playing besides Patrick Peterson? The Seahawks have the same exact problem. Who's playing next to Richard Sherman? The good thing is they have probably the best safety tandem in the NFL in Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas, so you can get away with not having the best guy 
aside from Richard Sherman. And then on top of that, they added Bradley McDougal in the offseason. So, you know, maybe instead of some three cornerback looks, maybe they come out in three safety looks and put Cam Chancellor more towards the line of scrimmage more often this season and put McDougal and Earl Thomas out wide. So, it could be a little bit of a different look for the Seahawks team, but it's probably still going to be the same. They did draft Shaquille Griffin in the third round, so hopefully he comes out and does something. They drafted the center out of LSU, and hopefully he can help that offensive line. And if these guys, they don't need these guys to produce, though. Like, sometimes when we do some of these uh, team previews, there are guys that need to perform for the team to do well this season. The Seahawks aren't banking on their draft class this year to turn things around, but coming up in the future... These guys, these young guys, they have to find something or else the Seahawks could finally lose their reign in the NFC of just making the playoffs every single year. It's really hard to do. It's really hard to not only, you know, draft this team, have them stay good, but just keep them all on the same team. Because a lot of times, you know, these guys are going to become free agents and they're going to want big money and you end up losing a couple of guys because of the salary cap. The Seahawks have done... A, like an unheard of job almost with the way they've been able to keep guys on this team like Michael Bennett just signed in our team friendly deal you know Chancellor's on a team friendly deal uh Sherman is you know Sherman's commanding a lot of money right now we'll see uh, eventually some of these guys might end up going but like even Russell Wilson they, a lot of people thought once Russell Wilson commanded his big contract big quarterback contract that you know they wouldn't lose salary cap flexibility that they were able to sign guys like Cliff Averill to good deals and stuff like that but Russell Wilson is signed now, and they're still doing pretty good with that salary cap. Rob, Doug Baldwin's another guy that's on a, another, you know, no one's really vastly overpaid on this team. So that's definitely a credit to the front office of this team. And also a credit to, the, you know, just this team in general is the fact that they've gone through so many defensive coordinators. They lost Gus Bradley. They lost um, Dan Quinn. But they're still going, man. They're still going with Pete Carroll head coach and whoever they throw in at the defensive side they got enough talent on this team and a good enough brain trust that the defense still performs so you know Seahawks probably gonna make the playoffs again this year probably gonna win the NFC West I think it might be close between them and the Cardinals I don't think the Seahawks I mean if you ask me I wouldn't be surprised if the Seahawks missed the playoffs and went eight and eight or something like that and some random stuff happened they missed it because it feels like they're due to miss the playoffs one year out of pure randomness because the nfl is just really a competitive um series and or well, what do you call it? league i should say and you just never know what can happen sometimes but more likely they will make the playoffs and i would say they end up with like a 10 and 6 record or something like that maybe 11 and 5 the record their schedule isn't the hardest schedule so you know you know, they got a good kicking team. They got a good punting unit. Those guys are still together. They got their defense is really good at tackling too. Like <laughs> they did, they cover well. They're, they're probably the best tackling team. When you see those guys, they wrap up really well. Bobby Wagner had like 160 tackles himself last year. So um, gotta avoid the penalties a little bit. And eh, that's about it for the Seahawks. Like I said, good team once again. Not too much of a surprise with this one. So, you can take it for what it's worth. Let me know what you guys think about the Seahawks. Seahawks fans, you guys think the Seahawks might be making a Super Bowl run this year? Let me know why. Um, as far as this game, uh, we played really conservative against the 49ers. Didn't really air the ball out. He came out on a very run-heavy defense. He was definitely focused on trying to stop Bronson. And I realized that, but I still ran the ball anyways because he just kept on turning the ball over. So, I was like, you know what? It's raining. Let's just play really conservative. We don't got to put up 50. Let's just get the win and get out of here. So, that was the game plan here. So, leave a like the video if you guys enjoyed it. We're 4-0 on the season now. Great start once again. Uh, hopefully we can make a playoff push subscribe for more online connected franchise whenever you guys like and I'll catch you guys next time